And welcome to First Coast Living. I'm Casey DeSantis. And I'm Charlene Shirkin for Curtis today. Oh, it's so good to see you. Yeah, and Mike Pringley, too. I'm the guy in the world. You lovely ladies. <laughs> good to be to. here. You have to say that. You have to. <laughs> Otherwise, there's an eject button and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he just goes off the set. Uh, so, big weekend for us in the DeSantis Everyone? household. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It was Madison's baptism, my little oh. daughter. And so, they said, would you like to put in photos? And I'm like, yes, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> Any opportunity we have to see Madison. So, there that's a family picture. Isn't she just adorable? Aww. So that was at Our Lady Star of the Sea uh -huh. in Ponte Vedra. And then Ron's uncle is a priest up in Ohio. He came down. He presided over the ceremony. Whole family was in town. Oh. There's a little stinker. That's post baptism. Uh, we they, The family rented a house down kind of near Volano Beach. And so that was on the Weirdly colored bedspread. I thought it was kind of weird. If she made a mistake, we wouldn't have been able to tell. Neither here nor there. Took some <laughs> photos with her in the dress before we took it off, which she didn't like too much. And the rest is history. She didn't like the dress or didn't like to take the dress off because that meant I'm no longer the star yeah, at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. It yeah. was. I think it was the <laughs> fluffiness too. She just didn't like the fluff. There was a lot of fluff, a lot of crinoline, and just you know, I don't think after a while she just got really tired of it. But it was fun. Well, it was. A, yes. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful it was ceremony. It was beautiful special. to have all friends and family gathered and. On to be there and she yeah. was of course the minute that I go and there's a line to sit you know with Casey take a picture with the baby the minute I get up there Madison loses it and so <laughs> I wish I had sent you this is the photo earlier but your sister kindly takes Madison so you and I can have our nice little picture and then proceeds to photobomb the picture. Yeah, it was pretty funny when you saw yes. me that my sister is just you know, she's the Air Force pilot right. I told you mm -hmm. about so mm -hmm. she is she's yeah she's she's crazy you know her call symbol was spaz in the Air Force I don't know if she wants me to say that story but Too whatever late. Too late. It's out there. No, she's. But she's one of the most impressive women you'll ever meet in your life. But she is also hilarious. She, and so she just, you know, gave this cute little photo bomb, which we would show. But you know, it's kind of. I think it's on your Facebook. It's on it? my Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, you're there tagged you on it, so it's on. I know. Too. I, I think I gotta look. I gotta look. <laughs> so she was okay with the water. Ceremony. She was because I practiced in the bathtub. Oh, I did. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I know because I was so afraid she was going to cry. So I've, I'm the so, godfather of three. So are you? Three I can see that. Oh so, my gosh! It can be interesting when you hold them in there. They're oh. dipped in the water. So yes, you never know. I've never had a mom do that for me. Ron's sister um, mm. cried, I guess, her head off, and to this day they talk about when she was. So I was like, I don't want everyone Very to smart. remember how she just cried her head off. So we go in the bathtub and I pour a little water over her head. Now, granted, what I was concerned about was. That it, this is cold water, and it's, we we we've been practicing with warm water. Right. So I didn't, so, it was fine. Oh, good. It was, it was it was so much fun. She though. did great. And she, you both looked great. The family yeah, looked yeah, great. It was so was lovely. Good. Yes, it was, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so there are other. I don't know if that's really Aww. a headline, but there are other stories that we found that were fascinating. Um, that the Speaking of put clothing together. and being dressed appropriately for, for a function or an event. Nice segue. Okay, the story's <laughs> all over the place, especially uh -huh. on social media because this is where it originated. So United Airlines is facing some backlash after refusing to allow, did you hear about this, two teen passengers mm -hmm. on the flight from Denver to Minneapolis. The reason why, I guess the two girls were wearing leggings. And one of the women who witnessed the incident hmm. tweeted about it. Another person saw it, and then, you know, the rest is history. But here's the deal. So United responded on Twitter yesterday saying that the passengers this morning were United Pass riders who were not in compliance with our dress code policy for company benefit travel. So that's mm -hmm. like when you get a free pass because somebody you know works for the airline, so you have to adhere yeah. to the professional dress code expected from the company. As if you were an employee. Correct. Okay. So then later the company tweeted, to our customers, however, your leggings oh. are welcome. Well, of course they are. Have you been <laughs> on a flight as of recent? Yes. I mean, leggings, that's actually, that covers a lot more than what people wear typically. Nowadays, yes. Well, they're flights. super comfortable to travel, especially if you yeah. are about to do any kind of international flight. Oh my goodness, they're the most comfortable things you can wear. So as for the teens, they did go change their outfits so that they could then get on the next flight. So basically, yeah. I think they did not read the fine print of the yeah. ticket. It's the real teeny print that you can't see. Yeah, it's like when you sign up for Facebook. Like, you, well, you know, it's like, yes, you're here to all now, this stuff. all now, it's all print I can't see. <laughs> You'd think though the okay. person who gave the ticket might have said, hey, heads up. You would have. Or met. maybe they did, and then the teens did not yeah. but, take but it seriously. Went back. The dad, I guess, was wearing shorts too, and someone said, well, the dad can go on in shorts, but they can't go on in leggings, and I guess it's in the company policy. If you're going to fly for free, you know, and then, and then you have to adhere to the policies. You have to so, dress professionally. So there you go. There so you go. if you're if you're a passenger, we don't want you to get confused thinking your leggings are not welcome. Yeah, you can wear, you can wear pajamas if you want to. Then I have seen that. And curlers. I've right. seen someone oh, actually. Oh, Lord, no. Stop. <laughs> stop. Curlers. Okay. All right, so we've been talking a lot, as you know, about those self-driving cars. Cannot wait for them. 
Well, Uber temporarily hit the brakes on tests of its own self-driving car after a See? crash Friday in Arizona. So it involved one of the company's autonomous vehicles, but but apparently it was not the automated car's fault. The accident was caused by the driver of a second vehicle who failed to yield to the Uber car while making a, making a turn. Scary. rather. So a spokesperson for the Tempe Police Department told Reuters that vehicles in Arizona, Pittsburgh, and San Francisco were still grounded Sunday while the investigation continued. So that they're, now they're going to install like speakers in those cars so that if something like that happens, the car can be like, hey, I was going here. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> well, like, especially if in New Jersey, this car's come out. You know, the vast majority of crashes are caused by human error. So the automation is supposed to take that variable uh -huh. out of the but equation. You see how that person is sitting in the front seat? They have to be there to be on guard in case something happens. Mm -hmm. Like that cute little couple right there, you know, if the car doesn't necessarily pull up in the right Correct. position, you know, the, they have to have people there. To, so it's not really as relaxing as you might think it would be because you still have to be vigilant. Like, oh, I, I would, would be, be looking so around. Bored. I'd be like, oh, what am I doing? Oh. I'm so bored. See, I'm not, a, I don't. I'm not it, sold on this. No, I'm not either. Okay. I think though, as, as our population ages, things like this are going to make getting around much easier because they think about so many people who they can't see and they have to give up their car keys. Sure. I think this will definitely, I, I think this is a great era to be aging right now I with just, all the automation well, that's out after there. the testing phase. Yes. <laughs> well, that's why I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> right, right. Let all them, yeah, let go, all the go innovators go and the first adapters <laughs> Doctors try it out. Right, Arizona, not, San yeah. Francisco. You guys, let us know how it goes, and then we'll bring it to Jackson. And that second, third generation of people who finally get an iPhone right. or something to that effect, right. like my or dad, Mac or yeah. something like He's that. He's just yeah. now texting. I was very proud of him. Yeah. After like, you all figure it out. He just hasn't figured out autocorrect on texts yet, though. He's like, why is it coming up differently than what mm. I'm putting? Like, dad, it's autocorrect. He just <laughs> and goes right over I've the head. I've turned that off too. You, ha you know what? I need to turn it off. <laughs> you for can him. turn just it off. This spell. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, also making the rounds on social media, there's another story. A man who had the bright idea to <clears throat> oh, no. kind of go one on one and have a little personal <sighs> experience with a shark. He decided to pat it, <sighs> kind of like a dog. <laughs> Can you believe this? I so, what is he doing? who knows? Who even knows where this video was filmed? Some people said, "Is it a fake?" They said, "No, it's." They think it's legitimate that he was Jared, that off real? the coast of somewhere, doing that, which looks it like looks a real. really, really bright idea. So we'll just sit there and watch that for a second and There's hold our breath. It's, sharp. it's I mean, kind of mesmerizing to watch it because you're kind of watching it. You're waiting for it to go really horribly bad. <laughs> right. That moment of What's no good happen? can come of this. <laughs> right, right. It's a little anticlimactic, actually, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, based on what you used to see when you were covering the news, a lot of times when those things made news, it was not such a good reason. Seriously. All right. So many of us have been there. You know, you're trying to get that big promotion, so you do all the things that you think you're supposed to do. You take on extra assignments. You come in early. You stay late. Maybe Maybe you kind of find opportunities to chit chat the boss. We'll get this. A new survey says all those things are good. Don't stop doing them. But what you really need to do is to be funny. The survey found that people perceive funny colleagues as more competent and confident than oh serious God. or boring colleagues. Well, that goes really well until the joke doesn't come out correctly, yeah. right? Oh. And then it's at the boss's ex expense, and then you're in trouble. Okay, so and as with these everything. cameras rolling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and so it's dangerous in TV, so it depends on what profession, maybe? Yes, exactly. Television. So you have tips for, like, okay. all right, not to get. Not to go overboard. Okay. Don't, okay. don't jump the shark, don't if jump. you will, ah, while I'm making a joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, Happy Days <laughs> reference. There See, you look, go. Charlene's on a roll. She's going to get a promotion She's right after the show. I've always seen Char's fun. Know the right yeah. timing, they say, is really important. Stay away from sensitive topics. You know, is what they say about dinner. You shouldn't talk politics or religion, right? Oh. So there you go. Maybe don't use that in the workplace. Who knows? I don't know. And use self-deprecating humor. So target yourself and leave others off. I do that quite I frequently because I'm a good target. And I so. am too. It's, yeah, <laughs> forecast goes astray. I'm the most humble guy in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I point to a blank wall behind me. There's nothing there. That is true. It's not your fault. That's right. Although he is one of the most accurate meteorologists. Oh. You do, you, and I'm not just saying this because you're sitting here and we're on camera and it's being recorded, but you are. I remember when we were, it was like, I forget where it was, and he said, when you go outside, it's, it's going to rain about 4.30, 4.38, something like that. And sure enough, come 4.38, oh, the heavens opened up and there it was. Got lucky that day. My yeah. <laughs> and then she didn't have her umbrella, so she was cursing you. And that's right. So there's she was like, fault. at dar Mike. Yeah. Speaking of the weather, how are things going? Oh, um, great. Great. <laughs> it's just I was beautiful. Just so, yeah. Volleyball started.
by the yeah. way, Jackson Volleyball so out at the me, beach. You've behind got these Casarina. fascinating socks that some folks don't they realize. They have sand they have. socks because okay, when the sand gets back. that hot, mm -hmm. you can really burn the whole layer of your feet off. So we're not so there So when I did the seven-day forecast, when I do this at noon, I'm going to say get out the sand socks because here's why. Wait till you see this. Talk about mesmerizing. You saw the shark. Well, this is not <laughs> quite as mesmerizing, but <laughs> 90 to, well, there's subtropical storm trying to develop. I mean, can you believe it? it's March? The season doesn't start until June. And we've got what we call a subtropical storm that could be named Arlene. Now, if this develops, not moving our way, but it could send some nasty rip currents our way. So even though we've got good beach weather, volleyball weather, get out mm -hmm. the beach socks, uh, this could send us some nasty rip well, currents. Well, but I'm more interested, what's going over like the Memphis area? What's that all about? Is that well, going our way? Oh, it's no. a big tease. The nature, okay. once again, we're, we're just in a bad spot. Uh, our dry warm pattern will finish out March uh, very dry, about three inches below average and a high fire risk. So all mm, that rain okay. once again, what we've seen all winter long, the main storm track with the jet stream stays to our north. So here's the mesmerizing, mes mesmerizing part of the forecast. There's a seven day, I mean, 90 degrees by Wednesday. Uh, usually our first 90 degree days wow. late April, so about a month early and low rain chances. I did put in a chance of a shower storm at about 315 Friday oh. in the parking lot right here, right Casey. That, so right I don't that want you down. Out there. Three, right overhead, 15. Casey. We gotta keep you safe from Madison, yes, so and, please. As I say, usually it just rains when I walk out of the door and there's a little cloud <laughs> yes. and then it comes down and you know just if you want to be accurate, just can, follow me. That's right. Follow Casey. And sometimes you can almost set your watch to the storms during the summer. Right. You know this mm -hmm. as well, Shar. Yep. Oh, I just afternoon have, thunderstorms. Yep. Yeah. Well, and what do they say? Wait five minutes though, and it'll, it'll change, change in Florida. Yeah. Or go drive to a different part of the road. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, you Mike. Great being with you. Yeah. Yes, Good as right always. As